<laughs> Hello. How are you? Oh, that's terrific. Hi. You know, the other day I made a video on Extra Normal called uh, Glenn Beck and Sarah Palin Argue Over Who Hates Science More. And I watched it today and I thought, you know, that's really funny, but it's not very constructive to our national argument, is it? So I decided to do something constructive to our national argument with this video, but still reference Glenn Beck's ignorance to science. Instead of just making fun of Glenn for not knowing anything about science, I'm going to try to teach Glenn some science today with the help of my handy visual aid here. So we're going to teach Glenn a little something about astronomy, and I'm going to explain with a little graphic to Glenn the principle of gravity lensing, which is a very, very exciting tool for astronomers to use. So let's go to the whiteboard. And teach Glenn a little something about gravity lensing. So we need to have Glenn down here. This will be Glenn. There he is. We'll put his hair on there. And a little bit of an extra chin for Glenn. And there is glasses. And his little stick body, not drawn to actual girth. Now, Glenn has decided to learn a little something about science with us today. So he is looking out at the stars. The stars are up in the sky. It's a beautiful, clear night. Glenn is using, because he's really into the science thing all of a sudden, he really wants to learn as much as possible, and he wants to see some spectacular sights. So let's just say that Glenn is down here using a radio telescope. And no matter what kind of a telescope we use to look at far distant objects in the night, or even if we use our own naked eyes, the objects that we see in the night sky will invariably be at various distances from the Earth. The stars all look like they're sort of up there in the same space, but actually they're at many different distances from the Earth. So, let's just say there are some stellar objects that are this close, and maybe there are some that are this close. If the objects in this area are massive enough, and I'm talking about massive galaxies, the biggest, biggest things we can see, then sometimes we can utilize a phenomenon known as gravity lensing. Gravity lensing works like this. If Glenn takes his telescope and focuses on the objects in this area along this red line, his telescope will magnify the area that he's focused on and make that area appear much, much closer to Glenn, much larger in his field of view, and enable him to study it. Now, if it's a massive enough object, the density of that nearer object can actually be used to magnify the image of the even further object. Isn't that incredible? You can actually focus your telescope through the nearer object, and the gravity of that nearer massive object can actually magnify an object even further away in the universe. So here was this line that was an even more distant object. The gravity lensing effect from this nearer object can actually make this more distant object appear even closer than it did before. Isn't that something? So when Glenn looks at both objects, both the nearer object and then the further object that is being gravity lensed and magnified, these objects that appear very, very, very tiny or even invisible in a normal point of view will actually look much, much bigger to Glenn. And it doesn't matter what the objects are. Now, of course, usually they'll be galaxies, but you might see some stars in the field of view that is increased by the gravity lens, or 
you might see, as we saw in the Hubble deep field photograph, uh, which was not accomplished by gravity lensing, but was rather a very long exposure, a whole field full of galaxies. It really is a wondrous universe. And as you can see, finally, in our little demonstration, although unfortunately, not so much in real life, Glenn is finally experiencing what a wondrous universe it is, revealed to us by science. Doesn't he look happy? <laughs>